What is going on everyone? Welcome to the Somerset Isles DLC. I'm going to be presenting you my newest Stam DK build. I haven't really come up with a name with it yet, but I'll post the name in the title and hopefully it'll fit. So several of you have noticed in the previous 1VX videos that I've posted in the last month or so, I have been using 2H and bow and no longer 2H and sword and board. So first off, I'm just gonna discuss the very basics just in case you haven't seen my previous build videos. Oops. So first and foremost, I'm probably one of the only people that you're gonna know that plays a Wood Elf Stam DK. Big reason is because we get the 21% extra stamina recovery it's extremely powerful. Reason why I choose Wood Elf is for this reason. Resist Affliction, we get the 6% extra stamina and we get the, uh, the, the, the Poison Disease Resistance. And that's essentially it. The Stealthy Passive is pretty moot. But the, the big reason why I changed from Red Guard to Wood Elf is because yes, the Adrenaline Rush Passive is still good, but it's not like how it was last year. Uh, before Morrowind. It just it really got toned down a lot and it's just I, I don't like it. I've tested them time and time again. Yes, the extra stam you get from Redguard is extremely powerful. You can do a, little, a fair bit more of damage, but I just think the consistent recovery you get is just totally worth it. As for attribute points, this is how we're looking. It's stamina, no points to health, no points to magicka. We don't really need it. Well, at least I don't. If you want to switch these around a little bit, feel free to do so. Uh, mind you, this is out of PvP. In PvP, the health is around 21.8k. It's just kind of where I want it to be. So I think it's I think it's alright. For food, we're using the Dubious Cameran Throne. And for the boon, we're using the Warrior Mundus. So here's where the important part is, and what you guys really came here for. The sets. So, first, on the front bar, we're using 5-piece Truth. Disease Damage, Maul, Nernhound. And these are the poisons that I use the majority of the time in open world PvP. You make these with uh, Fleshy Larva, Nern Root, and I believe... I'll post it in the video, I can't remember off the top of my head. Then we're using the Master's Bow. Make sure you go infused. 452 for five seconds and the 301 single target weapon damage. Of course, stack, and it's a pretty crazy amount of damage you get. We don't run any poisons because we do want to uh, maintain the actual enchantment that we have on this, so don't run poisons here. The next, same as always, we're running Blood Spawn. It's really, really, really strong. I am running infused on the, uh, the headpiece, just I. Didn't really have the transmute crystals to uh, make it in pen, but I kind of like it. I like where my stats are with it. Another reason, I guess, is because if you put infused on the helmet, you get more benefit out of putting stand there than you would if you put a health glyph here, if that makes sense. If not, whatever. Then we're using the truth chest piece. In pen, max stamina. The other Blood Spawn Arm Cop, which is in pen and medium. Bone Pirate, same thing as last build, in pen. Again, Bone Pirate with in pen. Greaves of Truth, in pen, max stam. They're all pretty much max stam. Then Bone Pirate again. Then next, we're running a Necklace of Truth with a healthy glyph on it. I just like where my health is with this. The next, we're just running the first mate, uh, the first mate's mark, which is the bone pirate necklaces, or ring, sorry. And we're running the weapon damage enchantments on those guys. As for skills, we're running Stampede. I like the snare. You don't really need the extra damage that crit, uh, crit charge does for you, but if you like it, feel free to use it. I'm using D-Swing for just an extra stun. Deals good damage. Executioner. Self-explanatory, rally, burst heal, and major uh, major brutality, venomous claw, insanely powerful dot, take flight, gap closing ultimate, hits like a freight train, resolving vigor. This is our main dot heal, or hot. Some people get uh, annoyed over me saying that. Then a poison inject. This is what's going to cater to our. Uh, master's bow and vice versa 
volatile armor. This is our major resistance buff, and also it helps uh, helps Nightblades get out of stealth. And we have Shuffle. This is our major evasion. Then we're no longer using Igneous Shield because Fragmented Shield is amazing because we get 5.4 seconds of Major Mending, which is absolutely crazy. And then we're using Corrosive Armor. And this is kind of a flex spot for your ultimate. You can go to the Sigic Order skill line. I didn't level it up on this character because I just I don't have the patience to do that. Um, I don't even have it, but um, you can use the ultimate in that uh, skill tree, and you could use the one that gives you the major minor protection, I believe it is. It's much, it's much less expensive than Corrosive Ultimate, or the Corrosive Armor, and it's... I don't know. I'll have to experiment with it. If I do end up using it, I'll update the build in the future, and I'll let you guys know. As for CP, I'm just going to run through it pretty quickly. As for the more, I guess, irrelevant spots, so... Here we are. 40 Ironclad, 64 Resistant, 17 Medium Armor Focus. Here, here, here. There. And so on and so forth. Now, this is where the CP gets pretty important. So we have 15 into Bless just to get our healing a little bit higher. This tree is where it gets a little bit more unique towards the build. So, you still have 81 into Master Out Arms. A lot of you are thinking, oh, that's over-investing, you're wasting points. Yeah, this, it's pretty killer having that many points to Master Out Arms, and you could be spending it else place, but for this build in particular, you need this. So we have 81 Master Out Arms and 39 into Physical Weapon Expert. That unlocks essentially everything that we need. We have Repost, you know, this is, I guess, cool. Um, retaliation, cool. Butcher, pretty strong. And then here's the juicy thing. We have Tactician. When you use Roll Dodge to dodge an attack, you set the enemy off balance. Now, here's the funny thing. You don't have to Roll Dodge. Shuffle procs it as well. And I'll show you. I have one of my buddies coming in. He's going to be a little uh, little test dummy for us just to show you guys exactly what Tactician does. So essentially what Off Balance is, is it's a status effect where if you hit someone with a heavy attack or any sort of ability that will proc the result of the Off Balance, it'll stun that person. So as you saw earlier in our skills, we're using Dizzying Swing for our stun, and we're using Leap. So not the two most reliable stuns in the world. It's not very controlled, but... With Tactician, we could control the battlefield, essentially, with stuns. You can off-balance, I, I don't know how, what's the the, the maximum, I, it might be 6, but I've off-balanced, I think, the whole 1VX of kids. And I was 1VXing like 4 or 5 at least, and at the same time, they all got off-balance. It's pretty strong. So, we have that, and that's all and whatnot. Then we move on to here, you know, 9 to Thaumaturge, 31 Precise Strikes. 26 Piercing, and 49 into Mighty. And then here again, then Exploiter. So this increases your damage done against off-balance enemies by 10%. So what does this exactly mean? So if you look at all our sets, right? Using Bone Pirate, okay. Good damage, Truth. This is exactly what off-balance really does once you set someone off-balance. It originally would only last 5 seconds, but with Truth, it lasts for 10 seconds, and at the same time we gain 440 weapon damage. With Master Spell, we get about 700 more weapon damage. And so if you add that all together with our... this Rally in Igneous Tooltip, which is 3400, it's okay. We're looking roughly at about, uh, if I can do the math in my head, like 5,100 weapon damage with the percentages added as well as the other damage modifiers. So that's that's a lot of damage, and trust me, it's very consistent damage. You're not, this isn't one of those builds where, and take my word for it, trust me, you can look at the past videos too, and this is even with the, the uh, incomplete setup. This is the full setup here. On my other uh, uh, 1VX videos, you could see leaps hitting for 13k on kids with like 28k health, and they're clearly specced more into tanking. This build hits so hard, and the damage is extremely sustainable. At all times, you're always going to have your Master's Bow up, you're usually going to have everyone off balance because Shuffle procs it, and you're roll dodging all over the place since you're in medium armor with the bow. Off balance is going to be up at least 85 to 90% of the time. So you're going to have that truth proc up all the time. The only catch is you just have to get used to roll dodging on your front bar more so than not. And again, 
You might think that you have to roll dodge on your bow bar to gain the major expedition, but if you switch your bars fast enough, like if you get off balance and you roll dodge, so here, you still get the major expedition. So you could still get the off balance while roll dodging with the 2H, quickly spar swap while roll dodging, and you still get the major expedition. You could still get away from whatever conflict you're in. So it's it's an extremely potent build and a lot of people told me that it's it's over the top annoying too and it's not, i wouldn't say it's a good dueling build and i would highly highly not suggest going to bgs considering that you need the cp to be successful with this build so stay away from bgs as i mean unless they they implement cp in it again it's pretty good in duels 2h and bow is not the most optimal for dueling considering that you know for bow it shines a lot more with line of sight and normally with duels it's not that cool to line of sight but other than that in open world pvp this build is a beast take my word on it all right guys so i just wanted to quickly show you how off balance works um so i have my buddy finnigo ham here if you know him uh from xbox probably know he has a YouTube channel. If not, go check him out. He's got some pretty good uh, pretty good ESO footage, so go do that. I'll put it in the description of the video. But anyway, he's just gonna spam some light attacks. I'm just gonna quickly show you guys how off balance works. I'm gonna show you working with uh, shuffle and just roll dodging it. So, all right, man, you could go ahead. All right, so this is just with shuffle. It might take a little time. All right, so off balance worked. And then what off balance does, you can stun someone directly afterwards. All right, so there's the off balance with roll dodge. So again, while someone's off balance, you get the 10% extra damage for 10 seconds, I believe. If I'm wrong, all it doesn't really matter. It still hits ridiculously hard and it gives you a huge window for damage. And it's extremely sustainable. Because again, imagine you have four people on you. They're all hitting you with something. You're rolling around. Shuffle's activated. At least one person is going to get off balanced. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry if I sped through it pretty quickly. I just drank a lot of coffees because I'm going to pull off an all-nighter playing this game in the Monster Hunter world. And, I mean, hopefully you just grasp the, the general concept of the damage potential this build has, the sustain, and so on and so forth. I haven't really been into PvP too, too much today. This is, again, the first day that Somerset has been released. And I'm just kind of scared if I stand there too long, it's going to be too laggy, and I won't be able to perform as well as I really want to. So I'm going to wait a couple more weeks until there's a possible... Uh, mini patch or so so they can repair some uh, some bug fixes and whatnot so up until then I promise I'm not gonna have another month-long hiatus I just wanted to give enough time for me to work on this build as much as I can to make it as strong as I possibly can and to give you guys a good product so again hopefully you guys have a great time in Somerset DLC I surely am too with the exception of grinding out the Sigic Order it's a pain in the ass but anyway guys Hope you have a good evening. Have a good one.